Every three months, Trackmania releases a fresh seasonal campaign with 25 new maps. In these campaigns, the maps typically aim to cover a wide range of the main styles found in the game, including tech, dirt, full speed, RPG, and more. But there is always one map that comes to mind whenever a new campaign is released, and there are good reasons for it. The map? Spring 2021 11. A seemingly straightforward and brief map with a mix of dirt and grass. When it was current, this map surprisingly taught me numerous small yet crucial lessons. The map starts off with a straight leading into a right turn, followed by a grass downhill. Minimizing airtime here is key by taking a slight diagonal approach, because taking this downhill in a straight line will most definitely make your car go flying. Luckily for us though, we don't really have to care about this in this specific section, because you can just drive between these poles in the start. This makes the start more trivial as you barely gather enough speed to avoid loss of grip doing so, which means that you can almost drive in a complete straight line to set yourself up for the next part. A small but wonky jump. The reason I call it wonky is because there are many ways it could go wrong, like hitting something or just having a bad landing. Once we managed to get that right, we entered the raid boss of dirt turns. The turn which taught me more things than any other turn in the entire game. As a beginner, you're probably thinking, what do you mean, it's just a right turn, right? And while that is true, just turning right is definitely not the most optimal way to drive it. See, when we enter this turn, our speed is around 200, and we are also in the third gear, indicated by these lights in the back of the car. In this case, no sliding, where the car avoids sliding, is faster in this scenario. To determine if you're no sliding, you can just look at the skid marks. Four lines indicate sliding, where two means no sliding. We essentially no slid in the start on the grass already. But a problem we encounter here is that we cannot simply no slide throughout this turn, because it is too sharp. So to drive this turn the most efficient way, we want to perform a slide cancel. A slide cancel is when you force your car into a no slide from a slide. And we can do this by steering the opposite way of the turn for a split second after quote unquote oversteering the car. This trick is seemingly easy, but it requires pretty precise steering inputs, taking into account that we also want a good exit angle, and slide as little as possible. During a nose slide, you can actually steer a tiny bit. Players usually refer to this as smooth steering, which basically means that your car is not steering at a value of 100%. This can be achieved through various methods, including utilizing an analog input device, tapping really fast, or by playing World of Warcraft inside of Trackmania using action keys. Regardless of the method used, we're now in a no slide and begin to regain speed. We now want to shift our focus to gears. See what I did there? Shift, gears. Anyways, we're approaching 230 speed which is typically when the car wants to gear up. When gearing up on dirt, there's one thing that you really want to avoid. Steering. And in this turn we are currently smooth steering, so we want to stop steering for a few milliseconds when the gear shift is happening. The reason for this is because the car stops accelerating during a gear shift and the slightest steering will drastically slow down our car. Here is an example illustrating the difference whether you stop steering or continue without interruption. And as you may have thought that the tricksters were over, there is still one final trick in this section which will result in more exit speed. So instead of sliding or no sliding, the goal is to execute a speed slide or what some refer to as dirt wiggles. This is achieved by slightly overlapping our skid marks. If you manage to understand these tricks, then you already have a great understanding of how dirt works in this game. And this is just one of the reasons as to why this is one of my favorite campaign maps. But the map is not over yet. After this turn, there is a section which beginner mappers underestimate a lot. These sections that strategically break down the map into smaller parts. When viewed from above, you can see two of these sections, one following the previously discussed dirt turn, and another one bit further into the map. These dividers serve a valuable purpose as they introduce a brief pause between the intense segments of a map. They also provide an opportunity to make any track a bit more interesting, by adding transitions. Numerous high quality maps integrate multiple instances of such dividers. Take for example a dirt map by Valve, illustrating the design approach perfectly. Or the map that we're looking at right now, Spring 2021 11. Exiting this divider section, we have a seamless transition into grass, creating a smooth flow in the map. Utilizing platform sections, characterized by these borderless blocks, alongside road type blocks, identified by their bordered structure, is a great way to create diversity in the map layout. Which, by the way, is something that lots of great mappers frequently include in their maps. And here's one example by Roquette. Following this platform grass section, there's a drop down into dirt where you wanna land with a good angle to set yourself up for the dirt turn. 
Here you wanna avoid the bump sticking out while sliding as little as possible. Then utilize the space to the best of your ability and right at the checkpoint start a speed slide. After this we have another divider section which ends with a diagonal jump to the left into dirt. And then comes a somewhat controversial turn since we have too much speed to take the turn by accelerating. Consequently, you will have to either release or break in order to clear the turn. Once within the turn, ride the entire outer edge until it's over. This type of turn is typically referred to as an outside dirt turn, something I see beginner mappers do far too often in their dirt maps. I think it's fine to have one or two of these turns in a map, However, I've seen tracks featuring 4, 5 or even 6 of these in the span of 45 seconds, which in my opinion is a little bit too much. So another commendable aspect of this map is the variety of dirt turns, yet another crucial factor that experienced mappers take into account when building. An example of how to prevent an outside turn is to build an exit where the best approach is to force the player to take a different line than just riding the edge. And after this outside turn, it's basically smooth sailing into the finish line. So what makes this map stand out? Well, simply because it's so short yet packed with details. It's a great learning tool for both driving and mapping, and has been a great source of inspiration for me personally. And I thought it would be cool to share my insights with you guys. Anyways, I hope you learned a thing or two, I'll see you in the next one.